Johnny Jezik lost 70 pounds and reversed his diabetes with intermittent fasting and extended fasting. Thank you so much for being here, Johnny. Uh, why don't you give yourself a little introduction? Uh, who are you and what do you do? Okay, my name is Johnny Jezek. And I'm originally from communist country. I defected when I was 27 years old with my little four-year-old daughter and first wife. We stay in refugee camp in Europe for about five and a half months. And December 18, 1981, week before Christmas, we got the best Christmas. We were in the United States as a free country. Now I'm retired, so I don't work, but I try to keep myself busy with hobby and volunteering. So I'm a master mason in Masonic organization. I also just finished last year the Civilian Police Academy here in Redwood City, and I applied to be a volunteer on the police force. So I'm waiting for interview and background check and stuff that takes little time. Well, now let's go about the intermittent fasting, keto and stuff like that. I got diabetes, I got high blood pressure, all that thing what you get in your 40s if you eat whatever you want and don't keep your diet in charge, you know. So basically, when I was little, I never had problem with weight as a, you know, teenager. I was eating what I was eating and didn't gain weight. I was around the 175 as a teenager. Then I was in the military in the special forces, in the Russian-type special forces. But always we try to joke here, you know, my friends here, they are from American military. they like, hey, Johnny, why you don't say you are in military? Um, but I was on the other side almost shooting at you guys, you know, and they like, well, you join, you for, you know, working on it and everything. You thank you for your service and everything. I was very surprised, but that's how it is here. So after that, I married the first time. We got a little girl, baby girl, and it was okay still until like uh, my early 30s. In my early 30s, I started gaining weight and I tried many diets like anybody else. You know, you will not eat lower calories, whatever. You lose weight, no problem. But then, when you start eating, you can add back and another five, ten pounds on the top of it. So every time I try it, you know, some new diet came, I try it, and I not only get a bag, I get more bag. I'm like, that's it, I'm not trying anymore because this doesn't work. I'm not getting better, I'm getting worse. <laughs> and, you know, in my worst, I was a long time ago, well, a long time, about 2008. I was 2007, maybe. I was 313 pounds, and I'm only 6'1". So when my second wife died of breast cancer, I kind of was miserable, depressed, and I didn't go to work for like a month, and basically stay in a bed and didn't eat much, and I lost. I went to down to 240. So when I met my third wife, I was 240. I was still obese, but not as bad as 313, you know. And then we started dating and everything. I was comfortable. I was not depressed. And I started getting some weight back because I didn't know anything about fasting, OMAD, and low carbs, and you name it. So I'm like, well, went to 178. So September 2017, my wife finally decided, hey, I have to do something about my weight, you know, we have to do something. And she started keto. And she started keto a year later in September 2018, last year. She lost mm, maybe 70 pounds, you know, in a year. So she was doing very well and she was always on my case. Hey, Johnny, you should do something. You've got diabetes, you know, and you can reverse it, Dr. Jason Frank, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I couldn't eat what you're eating. This is horrible. That's not a manly food, you know. I, that, that's not for me, you know. So 
Yeah, the major decision was I started having neuropathy from diabetes in my legs, lower legs, you know, below my knee. And I also was having, you know, night uh, cramps from lower magnesium and you name it. And it was like, if it goes this way, a couple of years down the road, I maybe have to have my legs amputated. I don't want to have my legs amputated. I love driving. I drive cross country to Ohio every summer, every winter I fly, you know. I couldn't have my legs amputated. So I start searching, same like the green tea, you know, when I'm computer, start searching and I'm, okay, what am I gonna do? Well, I discover, I learn about Dr. Jason, Jason Fang from Toronto, Canada. And it was interesting to me, like, hmm, I can eat once a day or twice a day, but I can eat mostly what I want, not what my wife's eating. That's horrible, that thing, you know, all those kale and those green things. And, oh my God, she's only like 10 to 20 grams carbs a day. I decide I will go like 15 to 100 carbs a day. That's acceptable to me. And you know, we will do something about it. So I start watching his YouTubes. I bought some of the books on a Kindle and read them and stuff. And I'm like, hmm, that sounds interesting. Maybe that's something what I can do. I started after I learned everything from his books. I start testing it on myself again, like with the green tea. And I start the Omat once a day. I am a very hard-headed guy. I'm very meticulous and everything. So I didn't go any, let's breakfast first, skip, and then go maybe lunch and dinner. I'm like, no, I go straight to like 20 and four. So I went 20 and four for a few weeks. And it worked. I lost maybe 12 pounds, you know, in two, three weeks. Then I learned more, you know, like, about not only intermittent fasting, but water fasting only and stuff. I'm like, hmm, I have to do something about those itchy feet, you know, and stuff. They're like burning and stuff. And I got night sweats from my leukemia every night. You know, my pillow on a bed looks completely different color than my wife's from all the discoloration from the sweating. So I'm like, hmm, let me try the water fasting only. And I didn't have plan. I was like, well, if I couldn't do it, I quit after a couple of days. If I can do it a week, maybe two. Well, I stayed 35 days. And it was not easy. It was horrible. After like two, three, you know, after a few days, you're not hungry anymore and it's fine. But, and you drink a lot of water. But after like three weeks, I start hating water. It, Tastes the same. I need some another taste. Occasionally, I will have some coffee or tea. And then I hear about the chicken broth or some bone broth soup. So I went to Whole Foods and picked up the bone broth. It was horrible. It's like a Matthew drinking. I'm like, oh, I cannot drink this. Maybe you can drink this, but not me. So I just take a regular cube of bouillon, put in a water, and like once a week, make myself a little chicken soup, but just a broth, you know. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, that thing is so salty and it was so satisfying. You know, it got like, I don't know, 1300 milligrams of salt in it. It was tasting so good. And then I can go another week again, you know, with water only or coffee. And I drink black coffee. And I only use the stevia. I learned that the all other crap, what they give you in the restaurant, the white and uh, blue and whatever, yellow, that's not good for you. So I use the organic stevia like this. I buy it and I take it with me everywhere I go in case I go somewhere. Then I got it on me and I don't have to use this or use nothing. What I don't really like just plain black coffee. I like a little bit of sweetness. But let's say I go twice a month with friends for breakfast. So I will take this with me and I put maybe one third of the packet in a cup and then refill my cup. I put another third. So I use it like for three cups 
the one packet of stevia, so I don't think that throw me too much, you know, from my diet. So what happened after the 35 days, I broke the fasting. And I broke the fasting with watermelon and, you know, some easy food and stuff. Even they say, like, watermelon's got sugar and stuff. Well, I watch so many YouTube and so many success stories, you know, and the watermelon seems to be fine. It's not that high on carbs, so I was well. I did, I should be fine. Then, just before this, I find another. Oh yeah, and so when I I got like a book, I do I put all my you know blood pressure, sugar, weight every day, what I did, and I realized I was 44 pounds after the 35 days of dieting and water only, and before the few weeks of internet and fasting. So I'm like, oh, this is great. So a couple of weeks later, after I read, and of course the thing is. You end up on some way, and then you start eating, you fill your intestines and everything, and you came back maybe three pounds, I don't know, it could be five pounds, it depends if you did number two that the morning or not. So, so I find I lost 44 pounds, and this is great. So a few weeks later, before Christmas again, I went again like a week and did water fasting, I lose some more. And then I'm like, okay, I'm flying to Ohio to visit my grandkids. I'm going to eat not exactly what I want. I will be on a low carb and I will eat twice a day, dinner, uh, lunch and dinner, like, you know, 18.6. And I will see if, you know, I lose weight or not. I mean, if I can maintain the weight I lost. So I went there for like three weeks and... It was fine. I come back about the same way. I'm like, hey, this is great. Not the yo-yo effect like before. I can keep this. So, you know, it's not you you not spending money because you're not eating or eating less. But you need new clothes. I went from triple X stuff to medium now. And I went from... 46 pence to 34. And that's a wow. major difference. So, like around Christmas, after I lost the 44 pounds, I have to get all new wardrobe because everything was too big for me. So, I spent a lot of money. And now, what I bought at Christmas, it's too big again. So, because after I come back from Ohio to California, I start kind of eating and doing omad and then I will do like a week of water fasting and then again a month and I lost more. Well, finally, I start a little bit toying with hard water fasting. Not hard, hard fasting, just dry fasting. Mm -hmm. And that's really you pushing the envelope, you know, mm -hmm. not drinking anything, any liquid, any water and not eating anything. You're not supposed to do it long. So first I did it, I think, like for three days, and that was fine. And finally, like a week ago, I finished just, I did, see what I did before, I did water fasting and then dry fasting on the end. And whenever I do water fasting, sometimes I can get diarrhea or something. So I was not happy about it. Even I'm retired, I can sit home all day long. Well, Finally, last time, about 10 days ago, a week ago, I start doing dry fast, hard dry fasting only for like three, four days. <laughs> After that, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to ease off myself and rehydrate it, but not refuel. So I rehydrate it. I will take like, you know, the Epsom salt bath because on hard dry fasting, you can't even wash your hands. You're not supposed to take shower. You're not supposed to shave any contact with water. And the difference between water fasting and hard, hard dry fasting, you lose the weight about three times quicker. I was losing regular mm -hmm. water fast, maybe pound a day. On hard dry fasting, I was losing three pounds a day. Three pounds a day. Oh, wow. My my chart went like 
done very quickly. In March, I think I bought the scale, what you go on and on your iPhone, it shows you the weight and all the, you know, what's supposed to be the far body fat and everything. So I start getting on my iPhone all the information and it went like crazy down below, you know. I went from 220 to 203 on the end, you know. And three pounds a day, that's a major, major, major achievement. Of course, when you start rehydrating, you get the water back in the body and you gain sunlight back. So you will get, I will say maybe three pounds, I don't know. So the last time what happened, I did the heart dry fast, then I did water fast, and I gained a little bit back, but I ended up like 203 when I was finished. Then when you start eating and everything, the body fills in and everything, I'm now 203. So I'm 72 pounds less than I was September 19, 2018 last year. So I'm happy about it. I went twice for my blood test every three months. My A1C, it's like my doctor couldn't believe it, you know, because they are all teach, hey, you cannot reverse diabetes, you can just maintain it, and it's going to get worse over the time. And, you know, my blood pressure, it's like fantastic. My sugar is fantastic. My white blood count went down to 10,000. 10,000, it's still high. I still have leukemia, but it's much better. And my night sweat disappeared. I don't have, so like last month, I don't have night sweats. I will have them every every night, every night, right on the back of my head and a little bit on my back, on my neck, you know, right at the pillow area. So all that is gone, major improvement. I couldn't believe it. So what happened later, I discovered Dr. Legrand from Washington State. I don't know if you hear about him. He's a guy who started fasting when he was like 14 years old. And by the time he was 17, you know, he improved his health and everything. He does like little short videos, maybe under 10 minutes. And it's about water of only fasting, dry fasting, and the difference between water fasting and dry fasting, and what you should do or should not do, and how long you should water fast and dry fast. And so he's on a YouTube videos. And so he claims, well, not only him, but all the other guys, Jason Fung and everybody, if you go on a dry fast only, you lose maybe three times faster or three times more. And you're not losing really water. The body kind of learn how to create water from your own, whatever you have in the body. So all the blood cells got some kind of form of hydrogen. Then you're breathing air, what's got oxygen. And the body is so smart, it can create from the fat hydrogen and the air, you're breathing oxygen, your own water, and it's supposed to be very pure water, what you couldn't even have it when you distill water or anything. It's the purest form of water. And the body can certain time, not forever, not like water fasting, live on it. So it seems to be working for me. You have to be a little careful because it can put strain on your kidney and also can increase a little bit of your bad cholesterol on dry fasting. So that's what they claim. Did you tell your doctor about the fasting? And if so, what was his reaction? Okay, well, I'm in very fortunate. I just retired. Well, I retired 2012, but uh, I just start my, what do you call it, Medicare. Mm -hmm. For old people, you know, after 65, I just turned 65. So, with my new Medicare, I was able to switch doctors because of the old insurance that I had before the medical insurance and stuff. And I find kind of young doctor. And I think with young doctor, you got better understanding that's with somebody who is whole life, you know, believe that dogma that you cannot do anything about anything. So when uh, 
That was what, December 6th, I went for my blood scan and everything. My doctor seen it, and I went to see him like a week later, and he's like, well, I told him, I, you know, the medical center or whatever, they are sophisticated now, so they got, you can send emails to the doctor and stuff through their website. So I will kind of tell him, hey, I'm eating once a day. I lie a little bit to him. I didn't want to scare him, and I didn't tell him I didn't eat every five days or something. But I will tell him I'm eating once a day, and it worked for me. And he saw the numbers, and he's like, well, it looks good. Just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> so later I told him, you know, after New Year, I told him that I didn't eat for you some days also and stuff. But, you know, Jason Funk says, don't tell too many people about it because they will be against that they will think you're trying to kill yourself or something so i'm trying like you know i will tell a few friends and they'll you are crazy you're not eating you know oh my god this is crazy you couldn't live like that and i'm like you know people in a caves they kill mama it may be a week share it with their friends and there was nothing to eat for another week or month or i don't know they go through that all the time and we are just Basically, from them, we not that far genetically from them. So, even, you know, yesterday I went for breakfast and there was a lady there with us sitting at the table and she's eating egg whites only and some greens and stuff. You know, they say that on a keto you can eat eggs, you can eat meat, you can eat a lot of things. My wife got every Saturday morning her pile of bacon and eggs, you know, that's her breakfast on Saturday morning. And that smell drives me crazy, but it doesn't bother me that much. I, if I don't eat, I don't have to eat, it's fine. Another thing, what else I find out, on the hard dry fast, you don't feel hunger. Mm -hmm. You feel thirst, you're very thirsty, yes, for a few days. But the hunger kind of, it's suppressed by the thirst. So. I can deal with it better, you know, my tongue is like glued up of my mouth or something, but, well, you know, it's just much easier to deal with the hunger portion of the fast. Do you still feel like you face any challenges when it comes to your weight, or do you feel like you just like... Yes, I do. <laughs> I just, um, like before this last fast, I went to my doctor and he changed in my status that I'm not anymore obese. So I used to be morbidly obese. Then mm -hmm. I was just obese and now I'm just overweight. <laughs> you know, the body mass or fat mass or whatever in the body. So I'm just overweight. What is still not good, but much better than morbidly obese. Or so he told, I told him I would like to go 175. I would like to be, that's when I was in the military, I was about 80 kilograms, what's about 175. And he says, I need 186 not to be overweight. I will be normal weight if I'm 186. So I'm thinking to go like 175. And then, you know, if I gain over holidays or something, five pounds, I will be still under the 186. I will like to fluctuate between 185, 175, 185, somewhere in that, you know, because they say you're not supposed to just have OMAD every day or fasting and stuff. So what I'm doing, I'm eating mostly OMAD every day. Then sometimes I'm eating lunch and dinner, so the body doesn't get used to it. Hey, there's only one thing we're going to adjust to this. Then like once a week, I have a pasta, meatballs and red sauce. You know, I look in the can of the red sauce and see if there is not too much sugar or try to get some from Whole Foods, you know, what will be better for me. But I get regular pasta uh, and I enjoy it. <laughs> but okay, you know, then so they say if you feasting and fasting and omad and all that, that that works the best for the body because it doesn't adjust to the new system. It kind of get confused because you're doing all the time something different. Right. So that's my plan for now to go another. I'm 206, so I need at least 20 pounds to be to make my doctor happy. 
and probably 30 pounds to make myself happy and get a whole new clothes again. <laughs> driving me crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> You know, you don't eat. So what? You don't eat 25 days. That's great. You just drink. Mm -hmm. I drink the Fiji water. That's my favorite water. Mm -hmm. And I'm not making any advertisement or anything. I do the ketones. That's another story. I use these ketone strips now. I bought the cheap one, like 150 strips for $20 or something. After a week, I start getting forced reading. They kind of oxygenate and stuff when you open the bottle and close it. And I start worrying about my liver and kidneys because it was showing I got some problems. I'm like, oh my God. So I bought some supplements to fix my kidneys and liver. And then I read, um, you know, YouTubes and read books. And I'm like, you know, the, and you know, like on Amazon, you got those stars readings and stuff. And people like, you know, this, I got problem after a little while, it was start giving me false readings. I'm like, Oh my God, that's maybe my case. Maybe my liver are just fine. So I research on Amazon and there is this one what I just showed. They got each strip individually packed. Inside there is a little, the, hydro, the thing what keeps it dry, the little pocket and the strip. And each strip is individually packaged. So it could not get oxidated or anything. And all of a sudden my readings are fine. I mean, heavy ketosis, you know. My kidneys, livers are just fine. Everything's fine. So you have to be careful what you order and not to be cheap. So what is one piece of advice you would give somebody else who's out there right now, they're trying to lose weight? One, one good thing you'd tell them. One good thing? Well, it's not for everybody. You have to find what works for me. My wife cannot do intermittent fasting. She try and you know, she's got stress at work and other people eating at lunch and forget it. Just find out what works for yourself. Mm -hmm. Test different things, you know. If you tell me a year ago that I will be not eating 35 days or I will be not eating and drinking for four days, I will think you got some problem, you know. I couldn't do that, I will die, you know. So just find out what it will for you. You know, my niece in Czech Republic, she asked, she see the pictures, you know, on Facebook and stuff. And she's like, what are you doing, Uncle Johnny? I'm like, well, I'm um, got this intermittent fasting and sometimes I need, don't eat for a longer time. She's like, oh, I couldn't do that. If I don't eat two hours, I get headache and stuff. I'm like, well, you have to get over it after a couple of days that all those symptoms disappeared. So... There is another thing you have to be very careful. If you lose weight, you cannot drink as much alcohol as you did before. You know, mm -hmm. when I was 278, I can have three drinks and drive home and I was safe. Now, I have to be careful. I have to get like one drink, maybe two, and be very careful, you know. But right. now, we start also walking. I'm walking every day for about half an hour on a weekend with my wife together. We walk about an hour. So we walk maybe three miles. And most of the places downtown here, we now just walk. What before we will drive car and look for parking for an hour and stuff. Now we just walk there and walk back home. So that problem, but it was big surprise to me, you know, like, I didn't realize right away, didn't click that with the weight losing, I have to the absorption of the alcohol and everything. So that was, that was like, I'm from country where they drink the most beer in the universe. Czech Republic, <laughs> number one, if you check on YouTube or somewhere on those websites, Czech Republic, Denmark, Germany, and blah, 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 goes down. But we are per newborn and everything, the more, most beer in the world they drink. So I always love my beer. Well, since September 19 last year, I did not have a beer. Because I find out it's got like 57 carbs or something, just one small beer. I'm like, no, that wouldn't work for me. But I live, I drink beer, I don't know, since I was 15. Because in Europe, it's much more... 
you know, relax. And if you look, I look always a little older, so I have no problem to get a beer when I was 15. But now I kind of rethink everything. I'm like, okay, I cannot drink beer. So I start drinking dry red wine. And I go to the place, I'm like, what is your driest red wine you can recommend it? And we get with my wife every night, like a glass of red wine, maybe two glasses if you want to drive or anything. And that's our splurge. And that one's about 10 carbs. Well, they say glass of red wine is about five carbs. So, so I can live with that. But I'm surprised, almost eight months later, right, from September, now it's like eight months later. I don't miss my beer and I couldn't go without a beer. I take my grandkids, my daughter to the restaurant. First, what do you want? I want Stella. Okay. You know, now it's like, what's your driest red wine? <laughs> so somehow this change and you have to do some adjustments. You know, I'm like, I don't eat uh, most carbs, like potatoes, rice, pasta, uh, I try to not to eat them every day. So let's say like I go for the breakfast, I will have giant nice piece of meat, you know. I, then I will have three eggs. They usually serve it with two eggs. I'm like, I don't mind to pay extra. I want a three eggs. I will have three eggs and bread, dry bread with a lot of butter. They give me like a little can of butter on the side and I put it on it so that's the ketogenic supposedly. So I will have that sausage, three eggs, and bread. And that comes also with country potatoes. But that I tell them, please put in a container, I take it home. When I bring country potatoes home, I split it in a half. That one portion for one person in a restaurant is four slices of bread, potatoes, and giant two eggs, and giant sausage. So I split those potatoes for two maybe three servings, put it in the fridge and, you know, have it. It's a little carbs with my meals, you know, like if I'm eating steak or something. So I don't eat the whole breakfast because the whole breakfast was horrible, but, oh my God, I could eat it. I used to eat it. That's but great. I'm, I'm trying to kind of stay good. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you sleep a little bit and... Then you have to fix it, but now I know how to fix it. I go on home Right. So I'm thinking now, since I discovered the Dr. Legrand and listen to his YouTubes and stuff, I'm thinking to go on home with dry fasting. So not to eat and drink anything for like 20 hours and then you can drink water, coffee, whatever, and then eat for four hours. And so I will see once I'm my weight, the 175, I think I can go back like having lunch and dinner, like, you know, 18 seats or something. But right now, until I reach what I want and look at this, oh my God, in eight, almost nine months, maybe, I don't know, since September last year, 72 pounds. I, I never lost 72 pounds. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Johnny, for sharing your story. Uh, I think it's amazing. Uh, if anybody would like to contact you, is there any way they can do that? Yeah, you can do the same email as we contact the johnnyjezakaol.com. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here and wish you success uh, in your weight loss journey. Okay, Doc. Nice talking to you. I hope you enjoyed that success story. If you have lost a significant amount of weight with intermittent fasting, please reach out to me at Kayla at six miles to supper .com. I would love to interview you for one of these success stories on my channel. If you're currently trying to lose weight and you're just having a hard time, check out my Slow and Steady Success Academy. There you'll find a course called Intermittent Fasting for Weight Loss 101, where I take you through the entire process from start to finish and how to implement intermittent fasting successfully in your life for weight loss. The link is in the description. The all access pass to Slow and Steady Success Academy is a monthly subscription plan that gets you access to every course that is currently available in this academy as well as any that will become available in the future. Also, you'll get access to our private all access pass members only Facebook group.